Looking back at where I made Mark 2, I have no idea what kept me going to finish the project, especially when I decided to ditch Mark 1 and restart the whole thing. Maybe it was the thought of how happy the person would be when I gave them the wooden watch as a gift. Or maybe it was just my obsession with ultimate challenges. Whatever it was, I would not like to go through that amount of sanding and hand tool work again. Which is part of the reason why I built the Pants Rider and why I have waited for its completion to build Mark 3. If you have a CNC at home, then you most certainly won't need to go through all my troubles. But I don't, and I have debated with myself a long time whether I should build a Pants Rider or a CNC. But I eventually stuck with the Pants Rider because I won't have enough funds to build a CNC. A Panzercraft mechanism is very helpful when making small bits and pieces like wooden watches because the template is larger than the size of the finished workpiece, therefore making the template much easier and safer to make by hand. That being said, while there is still a few weeks left of being a year 10, I am using the school CNC to cut out the templates out of PVC. I chose PVC because it is extremely easy to machine and it is dimensionally stable. Super duper nice, so glad I got this done on the CNC. And I came very, very close to one of the screw holes and that cut a bit was actually a brand new one, $35. Anyways, before getting this to the scroll saw, I'm going to make the other strap pieces as well. Alright, so I just got the strap template back from the CNC and looking at it, the cut quality is actually pretty good at least good enough for what I'm going to be doing with it but in close examination I actually found that the CNC has cut a flat spot over here and all the way over here so those pieces are basically trash and the only usable ones are in this square but that should still be enough so I'm going to make the back plate to attach to the template holder Looking at the offcuts, I think I can actually use them because this one is missing a bottom and this one is missing a side but it has a bottom so together they will actually form the correct shape. And so I'm going to try and glue the two halves back together with some PVC cement. This was most definitely one of the most stressful glue ups I've ever had because the 6mm steel rods I used for aligning the two halves were a bit tight and with two of them it was very very difficult to push the halves along the rod. While the glue is drying I can work on the other templates. For the watch case templates I'm going to just screw them onto a piece of MDF with slots on it. After the glue has dried, I first tried hammering the rods out, which only expanded the metal being hammered. Luckily one rod was longer than the other, so I was able to fit my drill chuck on it and remove it. And then it was the second glue up to glue the completed halves back on the PVC. Now that the glue is pretty much dry, I can trim this to size and then mount it on a piece of MDF just like how these are done.
With the template made, I can now actually do a test cut on some scraps to see whether this is going to work out. Holy shit, I can't believe this actually works. I was actually worried about some magnification problems, but apparently this works very, very well. It really did reduce this size by twice the amount onto here. So now let's find out whether it can mark the whole locations. For that, I'm going to change to this V bit, and then I'm going to use this and the template follower like so, so that it, I just insert it in the hole, plunge, back it out, and then plunge, like that. Okay then, I messed up a bit on the first one because I underestimated how deep it will go. But luckily this is a test cut, so lesson learned. Now I just need to go over to the drill press and drill out the holes. When I was making Mark II, I was a little bit hesitant on using a table saw to trim these out because I was afraid that the table saw would damage it and since that was the only shot that I got, I went with the band saw, but today I feel brave. These turned out alright, so now let's try out the rest of the template. I've got everything set up, and here goes nothing. Oh great, the rabbit bit spun loose again. Anyone with good suggestions for better collets? And it's loose again. Great. Just great. Holy cow, just look at this. There's a big freaking gap right there. I can probably fit another elephant down there. No wonder it keeps coming loose. Luckily, I have a really good collar that I bought from Australia. Not from China. And this one fits super nice. It's not coming off. Take three with Australian collar. That turned out alright, so now I'm going to go full depth and make the rest of the watch. I thought that the straight bit would actually just destroy the whole thing, but apparently not. However, I'm still going to order some new collars for the sparrow bits because I'm going to need them. On the good side, the 32mm crystal that I bought for this fits perfectly into the hole. Literally just a friction fit. No pressing and then doesn't fall off. It is a perfect hole. The uh, next step will be to hog out the material over here. And to do that, I'm going to continue routing this hole all the way through so that I can flip it around and use that hole as a reference for hogging the material out at the back. Kind of as expected, I do have a little bit of alignment issues with the two holes. So I might do something different with the real one, I might just use a forstner bit on the other side. But now it comes the problem of cutting the underside with this template, in which my straight bit, my 6.35 shank straight bit, isn't actually enough to make a full depth pass. And since the cutter is 6mm and the shank is 6.35, I can't just insert it all the way. So that means I'll, I'm actually forced to use this 6mm 
spiral bit that has a 6 mil shaft in which my 6 mil collet is actually loose as previously tested and I can't use the Australian collet either because that one is meant for a 6.35 shank so I've gone out of my ways and shimmed the 6 mil collet with some painters tape I've had good experiences with it and bad experiences with it it's kind of 50-50 so let's take our chances I just realized that as soon as I used the template to hog out the back, the only place holding the watch in place, which is also at the back, will be cut away, which means the watch will be loose, and that can be quite a bit of a problem if it flies out. So I've made this little wooden block here, a wooden ring, that fits in the inside of the watch, like so. And then I can use a bolt to hold it down onto a scrap piece of wood. I'm putting a small block of wood to prevent me from cutting into the bolt. I've got it set up so that it just misses the bezel like that. And now I should be ready to go. Just what I have anticipated. There was quite a bit of chipping out as you can see in that corner over here But I think that was because I was a little bit aggressive on that cut Like the template follower just dropped down so that probably caused it But overall it's pretty good. Still a few improvements to make on the template Maybe add some shims at the bottom so that I can't cut into the bottom of this watch but now I'm going to use the V-bit again and use the holes on the template to mark out the hole locations on the watch. As you can see, when I was drilling the holes, one of them actually broke off. And that actually wouldn't have happened if there wasn't so much chipping out. Now I've noticed something really weird, and that is all the chipping out is actually on just one side, which is this side. And this side actually looks pretty good. Some sanding and that should be good. I mean a lot of sanding actually. So it might have to do with the direction I'm cutting it. Maybe I should start from this side and then go upwards instead of this side, go downwards. But as a proof of concept, if you don't have a CNC at home, a pants router will do just fine in making one of these watches. 